What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're entering the courtroom once again. We're going to be watching a clip of a rapper by the name of 100K Tuck, I believe. And the reason why he's taking the stand is because uh, one of his best friends that he calls his brother, someone that he grew up with, uh, was shot and killed in a mall in Nashville, I believe. Nashville, Tennessee, a 22-year-old man was killed in a shooting at Opry Mills Mall. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Opry. The shooting happened inside the mall in a hallway near the Auntie Annie's pretzel shop across from Old Navy. Damn Auntie Annie's. I love them pretzels. White icing, though. Gotta have the white icing. The victim who was shot was taken to Skyline Medical Center in critical condition where he later died. Now... The guy taking a stand was there and had a lot to do with the whole situation. And yes, you know, his brother or his best friend, whatever you like to call it, did pass away. Now, before we get into the clip, this is the question I want to ask y'all. I would love for y'all to leave in the comment section if you think, after watching this clip, if it's considered snitching. And I'm going to give you my honest input at the end. Alright, so let's go ahead and start this clip. And like I said, uh, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the situation. I'm going to try to break this down as best as possible. All right, so the first thing I noticed is he's not in no kind of jail uniform. Even though he was at the scene and kind of part of the whole fiasco, I'm guessing he didn't get charged with any kind of crime. And if he did, he's out in bond because he has street clothes on. But if I were to guess, he didn't get charged with anything yet. Sir, could you state your name, please? Mr. Tucker, were you in the Opry Mills Mall on May the 3rd of 2018? Yes, ma'am. Were you there with DeMarco Churchwell? Uh, I came first by myself. Okay. What happened in the mall that day between you and Mr. Golson? Uh, he told me he wanted to talk and squash all of them, squash the beef between them. Mr. Golson told you that he wanted to squash the beef. Yes. And what was the argument or conflict between you and Mr. Golson that day? Uh, we really didn't have like a, a real bad argument. We walked um, towards H&M way and he wanted to talk to me and we was talking and stuff. So I told him I didn't want to talk to him, you feel me? Because it, uh, what he was saying about this song about me and all that, I really didn't want to talk to him because I'm not trying to be cool with so I walked away, he said, come over here by Old Navy and talk to me through the, uh, it's like a little alleyway, the way it say exit, you can go through the alley and you can talk, can you chill right there and you go out there, it's like outside. So we was right there just talking, saying, uh, uh, you know, squash the beef and stuff. And he wanted me to call my brother and tell him that he didn't want to. Who was your brother? You know who my brother is, the one who died. Okay, I, I didn't know that was your brother. So your brother is DeMarco Churchwell. Okay, you guys just have different last names. It's my, it's, it's like my ten year family. Like that. I've been instead of calling my best friends like my brother because we've been together so long, you feel me? And we live together all throughout life, you feel me? Okay. So all right, so let me just say this. Let me get it out and open right quick. If you're speaking on the situation in any way, shape, or form on the stand, that's considered. To those real street cats out there, snitching. Hate to say it, man. Even though your brother died, it is what it is, you know? And deep down, he probably knows it too. So, did you ever approach Mr. Golson by his shoe shine kiosk and get in an argument with him? Like I said, I was on the phone. When I got in the mall, I was on the phone already on FaceTime with my guy, my girlfriend. I'm not interested in your phone calls. I'm okay, interested please. in knowing whether or not you approached Mr. Golson by his shoe shine kiosk and whether that was captured on video. I didn't approach him. How's he supposed to know if it was captured on video? Did you approach him by his shoe shine kiosk? I did not approach him. So there I should. Stopped. Okay, so there was no conflict between... Once we made eye contact with each other, that's when he wanted to talk to me. And it sounds like he didn't want to squash the beef. They probably had some words. If they squashed that beef like they were trying to do in that little alleyway with the exit sign, then nothing would have happened. No one would have lost their life. Obviously, they didn't come to some kind of agreement or terms with this beef squashing, and homeboy walked away on bad terms. That's what I'm guessing. 
But there was no conflict between you and Mr. Golson that day in the mall? No, you can see on camera, we didn't, nothing was wrong. Okay. So if he says that there was a conflict, that's not true? For, if it was a conflict, you would see it on the camera between so me you, and Mr. Golson. Okay, but according to you, there was no conflict? No. Okay. I don't have any other questions. And, and so you were there. Okay, so if I was a lawyer right then on the spot, I would have said, Bro, you just told me y'all were trying to squash a beef. So how are you going to tell me there's no conflict? Even if it doesn't look like a conflict at the time, y'all are still beefing. They're completely separate from Mr. Churchwell. Yes. Do you Did you know Mr. Churchwell? Yes. That was your brother, but you were yes. separate there from, you were not with his group of friends that day in the mall? I came to the mall first by myself because my barber wasn't at the shop. Hang on now. See how the attorney said, so do you know this individual? Of course he does. He just told you 30 times. That's his brother. Why does she keep asking? Why do these lawyers ask these stupidest questions if they've already been answered? It's to trick your ass up. Cat and mouse game, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to be on that stand. Them damn DAs and lawyers, boy. If they're really good, <laughs> even if you told everything 100% truthfully, these lawyers are meant to make you trip up. Discredit you in front of the judge, in front of the jury. If you're fumbling your words and trying to figure out what the hell these lawyers are even asking you, it can look bad. It can look bad even though you're telling the truth. And not to mention, you know, uh, when you go in the courtroom, whether you're on the stand or, or you're, you know, you're about to be going to prison, either or, it's a different vibe, man. You get a little nervous in there. No matter how many times you've been in that damn courtroom, you still get a little nervous. You know, especially when you have to start talking in front of that little microphone. It's a little, it gets a little nervous. So I didn't want to just sit and wait for my barber. So I came straight to the mall. Okay, but when Mr. Churchwell was at the mall, <laughs> were you with Mr. Churchwell and his group of friends when he got killed? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um. So just in case y'all are lost, Churchwell is his brother that got killed. Mr. Tucker, when you were having a conversation with Mr. Golson, at some point, you called Mr. Churchwell. First, I didn't call Mr. Churchwell first. No, I did not. I said at some point. Yes. So I wasn't being specific as to the, the order it was in. Do you understand that? I was asking at some point. Is that So at some point, you called Mr. Churchwell to come to the mall. Yeah, I didn't get to tell him to come to the mall because his phone had died. Okay. Then do you know why Mr. Churchwell showed up at the mall? Because I told my fellow friend. I didn't tell him on the phone because my phone died. I didn't tell him to come to the mall because the phone died. I did not tell him to come to the mall because the phone died. And then immediately after, what does he say? I told him to come up to the mall because I felt threatened. What the hell is that, bro? What is that? That shit don't even sound right. Unless I'm hearing it wrong and looking at it from a different perspective. Maybe I can have y'all's input to make me feel like I'm not as crazy as I might be thinking. But this guy, man, what the hell? Do you, you feel threatened? Yeah. Okay, did Who did you feel threatened by? Because it was Mr. Golson and uh, another guy from there he at the kiosk with the light-skinned short guy, you feel me, with tattoos on his face that told me, make sure you call your friends, make sure they come correct. That's definitely, by far, uh, snitch moves. Just saying, man. Light-skinned guy, tattoos on his face. He got into detail with that description, didn't he? I understand it's your brother, bro, and you're trying to do the right thing by your brother, but when you're in that kind of uh, lifestyle, street game and stuff like that, this ain't the way to do it. It just ain't. For the square life, of course, of course. If you're a square, you're going to take the stand and make sure that dude gets buried, right? If you're a square, for sure. So he's really just doing what a square does. And I think that is a three. Okay. But the other the other people were actually employees at the kiosk. Or That's what they say. Okay. Now, are you in the Gangster Disciples Ooh. with Mr. Churchwell? You guys in the same gang? Uh-oh. What, what are you talking about? You know what gangs are, right? 
Are you in the same gang? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, that threw him off big time. Look, you don't want to be a part of no kind of gang when you're in the courtroom, especially for a murder beat. He might not be locked up right now, but damn. Watch what you say, young buck. It's getting crazy now. They're throwing organizations out there. That's all kinds of railroadness. For anyone that doesn't know what railroading is, it's pretty much you can do a little thing and they're going to give you like 50 years strictly because you're part of an organization. But he said, no, what, no, what, what? No, 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 no. I never heard of gangs. It's <laughs> yes or no. You uh, are or not. Uh, okay, were you in this rap band, 100K Tuck? Yes. All right. Um, who else is in the rap band with you all? It's me. It's who me. are the members? Do you know who's in your own band or not? It was me and my brother. Just just the two of you. And you guys did a lot of local gigs and you have YouTube pages, right? Yeah, I have YouTube videos. I don't have a page. And in fact, some of these YouTube videos, they're pretty popular. They got 13, 14, 15,000 hits. You know, you guys are kind of like little local celebrities, right? <laughs> yeah. If I was on the stand, I'd be like, bruh. Run it back. I got over 100 million views, dog. Celebrity? <laughs> That's an understatement. They would have fried me in the courtroom if I said that. They would have stripped me out my street clothes, threw an orange jumper, and sent me right there on the spot. Trying to make it out. Okay. And in your videos, don't you talk about shooting people? Oh, oh. entertainment. Oh, you've been asked, but you still talk about shooting people in the videos. You and Mr. Churchwell. All right? It's all entertainment. And, All you, and, and some of the videos, do you have songs out where you're talking about we robbed you the first time, next time we're going to shoot you? I've never had a diss, Damn. I've never dissed anyone in none of my songs. So, no, no diss tracks? Never, I've never. No East Coast, West Coast, Biggie, none of that, no diss tracks. I've say. never sent a diss song out to him. Okay. None about Justin. And when Mr. Churchwell posted a picture of Mr. Golson's Snapchat, and put a gun on it, and you, you, didn't, you didn't post underneath it that you liked it, so you're going to get them. You're, you're gonna get them uh. They're watching the likes, y'all. They're watching the like buttons. The comment sections. And people ask me why I make my account private. <laughs> Even though that don't really mean nothing. If they got a warrant or something on Instagram, whoever's going to open up everything to them. So, but... It's always nice to have a little bit of privacy firsthand. You don't want to make it too easy for these individuals to walk right up into your social media and say, hey, hey, I got all plenty, plenty of evidence here for this trial. Even if it's not even pertaining to those rappers, it's going to look good in the courtroom. Crazy little video clip right here with these guns in it. Sacks of cash and fake drugs in the video. This is going to be great for the courtroom. Not to mention the lyrics. That's really going to make our job easy. What date? Can you, can you tell me what date that was, please, sir? You tell me what day it was, did you or not? I'm asking the questions, not you. You answer the questions. Ooh. So I the judge instruct you. Ooh. Now, is there a reason you're being invasive and not answering my questions? No, I know. Is it because you're lying up here today? No, I'm not lying about me. Are you attempting to mislead this court? No. Then why won't you answer my questions? Will you answer my questions from now on? Yes, I will. I'm the lawyer. I answer, I ask them that you ask them. Judge chimed in. You see that? Lawyers getting a little too powerful out there. <laughs> Judge had to claim as a certainness. Okay, answer the questions, bro. Move on. All right. So, it's your testimony today. You've never made any rap videos threatening Mr. Golson and posted them on YouTube. No, sir. I never made anything about Mr. Golson. But you do acknowledge that in your rap videos, you talk about shooting people, you show off guns, and you show off that sort of lifestyle. Yeah, a lot of, old, uh, a lot of other rappers do the same thing. I'm not oh, asking about what other damn. I'm asking about you. That is the worst answer, man. No one in the courtroom, no judge, no attorney, no one wants to say, hear you say, everyone else does it, so why can't I? That's like the worst thing you could say, man, because that's not how it works, you know? But look, this is the fact of life, man. You got to be careful what you say in rap music because later on down the road, you know, you could get into some shit. If you happen to have to defend yourself and take someone's life, Chances are, if you're a rapper and you've rapped about killing people in your lyrics in the past, they're going to probably use that against you. Everything you say will be used against you in the court of law, and that means even before you're even into any kind of shit. They will use everything you say 
against you, especially if it's recorded on social media. You're a rap freak. What you show? I do what I do to get my family to make it. You feel me? So is that a yes? You like showing off guns? No. What do you no. And He's were you the person that actually... <laughs> He's asking the judge, like, what, what's this fool doing to me, man? What, what, what's, are you going to keep letting him uh, carry me like this, bro? Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Homeboys in the street life, is that considered uh, snitching in any way, shape, or form? Key words, any way, shape, or form. I already told y'all what I think, and uh, even though, let's say, one of my best friends was killed, okay? Me, there ain't no way in hell. No way in hell, even though it was my homeboy. I'm not taking that stand. And if I am, I'm pleading the fifth. And I would tell every last one of those DA and attorneys, and I'll tell the judge straight up too. I don't snitch, man. This is my line of business, just like yours. You're a judge. You ain't gonna commit no crimes because you're a judge. Well, this is my line of business. I can't speak on shit. But at the same time, and I don't know if this is how this guy's thinking, but this is how the majority of people think, right? When their homeboy dies and they're right there on the scene, okay? Murder is a very scary situation because a lot of people can be charged with that murder that had really nothing to do with pulling the trigger at all. Anyone and everyone who set up the situation, you know, even if they didn't think they were setting it up, but somehow, like this dude, he called his homeboy, said he was threatened, waiting for him to come to the mall. That could easily get him indicted on some kind of uh, 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 conspiracy charge or something because he called the dude over there. If he never called his homeboy to the mall and he just left the mall, dude would still be alive to this day. But I don't know his homeboy. His homeboy could have been a live wire and, and he might have called him and said, I just want to you know, be picked up. And who knows? If the homeboy was anything like me, I'll be like, hell no, nah, I'm not picking you up. We're going back in there, dog. We're going to go finish this. You know, back in the day. Back in the day, I definitely would have done something like that. So you don't know. I don't know these people. Like I said, I don't know his friend. He could have been a hothead. And the dude, the defendant, that took the man's life, uh, he could have been a hothead as well. Or he could have been absolutely terrified. You know, a lot of people, when you got a gun and you're terrified, they end up pulling the trigger. And then regretting it later on down the road. That could be the situation with this dude. I don't know. But let me know y'all's input in the comment section below. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going on a little two-day trip. So you might not have no video for Monday or Tuesday. If I do uh, give you something on Tuesday, it will be a live stream. Live stream. So uh, be prepared for that. And on Wednesday, we'll get back on the groove of things. But this is a crazy situation, man. Crazy situation. Rest in peace to dude that passed away. Could have been avoided, man. But I hope you all enjoyed. Do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. Like I said in the beginning, go check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise off of Teespring. And as always, I salute to every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.